Sahab. We are reading uh, Dawn the Water Princess of Kashmir, Sarga 10, uh, Inception from Prakarna the Mind. And today is September 1st, 2023. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Rakesh, if you want to just give an intro again and we can start here. Yeah. yeah, the intro is that in our framework, the mind is a feminine. It's a friend, it's an enemy. Uh, and so one of the mantras that carries us across this domain where the mind is an enemy into the domain where the mind is an enabling friend and takes us to true enlightenment is obviously the Gayatri Mantra. So whenever you recite the Gayatri Mantra, I want you to think about Sarga 10 because Sarga 10 is where you are going to begin to understand the practical technique of how it really works. How do you really go from the mind to consciousness? And of course, it's not explained in terms of mantras. It's not explained in esoteric language. It's through storytelling. And storytellers have a challenge but they have to keep it very, very, very simple. And that the best that a story can do is use metaphors, which are easily understandable. And so I hope you like the simplicity of the metaphors to help you understand what's really going on in the mind. And so let's begin. And there's a lot in Sargaten. I mean, you can just spend months on Sargaten, each sentence. So, for example, what is it about Dawn's quest, which is identical to the quest of the Kashmiri Pandits? What does she say? What does she say about her quest that is identical to the quest of the Kashmiri pundits? Page 146. As we all laughed, I looked around the odd bunch, feeling grateful that they were here with me in this quest for justice and life. Justice and life. Okay, Alamikaji, over to you. Let's have you walk us through what struck you. Let's get started. Um, okay. So I, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I have mini me with me. Um, so I'll just, that's why I wanted to jump in and get my part out of the way before you know it gets even harder for me to comment um so i was just going to say that for me what's um yeah the, i'm sorry so uh what really struck me was the part that uh patanjali um the Let teacher go. Go. Uh, asked, go. okay ask dawn go. to not let only go. let go not only stop let being go. angry but also not have hatred for her um, mom's killer. Uh, I think that to me was, I wasn't expecting that because like like we remember, she took that oath and um, I didn't expect this to come up. So um, I think, and then you, you find out why, because later on, one of the Pandavas says that or maybe it was Patanjali himself, that the mind that's consumed with anger and hatred poisons itself. Um, 
and because he is trying to show her that if you don't have anger and hatred, then a way opens up to kill your enemy. Right, and by by mm, getting the self reflected back, the S S with a capital S, which I believe is God. I mean, or you know, because when your mind is still, you see your, you think you're going to see yourself, but no. When your mind is completely still, still, what you see is your essence, as you called it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that part I'm still not a hundred percent sure of how they're going to achieve destruction of the, you know, um, Aman yes. and Arman with that. But I'm looking forward well, to it. Well, you, you shouldn't be sure because you're still only at Sarga ten, and the pieces are being laid. But the first piece that Patanjali is laying out, which is very provocative, but it's the same thing in the oath of the warriors. May I look beautiful when I kill. Patanjali is saying, may, may your mind be without hate and still. But he's not saying don't kill. He's saying your chances of killing go up. And he says. There are better ways. To, to kill it. a hot-blooded killer, what should you be? Okay. Yeah, so that was really, uh, I don't want to take I too hope, much time. I hope that makes it more acceptable. This, yes. is not, this is not Mahatma Gandhi saying, turn the other cheek. No, no, Patanjali is not saying that at all in this story. Patanjali is saying, you come to me with a desire, I'm going to show you the way. It's not the full way. There's a lot still ahead, but this is the first step. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I was going to say that's really profound, and, and it's a, a real shift in the way. I think I remember a cup when we first experienced the, you know, Dawn's mother being taken away. Some some people in the group were, I, it wasn't me, were questioning, is this the right mindset for Dawn to have? And I was reminded of that because here, you know, here at that time I was thinking, of course, what else? You know, she has to, she has to have revenge and vengeance, and she has to be consumed by it to be able to, you know, give them what they deserve. And now we are, I, I feel like I'm reminded back to that time when everyone, when some people were questioning, is that the right mindset for her? And clearly it isn't, or it wasn't, because, or maybe what I should say is that it's, it was okay to have felt that at that time, but now she needs to have a shift. If she wants to be able to annihilate the monsters so yeah i don't want to take up too much more time i'm sure everyone has a lot to say so uh thank you this was a really um you know profound chapter sorry sarga <laughs> okay who wants to go next i can go yeah so this was very profound to me when um when you have explained the difference between her mind and um, Arman's mind, like, and and the metaphor you used is like, you know, your her mind is like a dawn, mind is like a homeland of Kashmir, and if you put the stones, there will be ripples all the time. Acceptable, fine, but at the same time, Arman's mind is also like a lake, but it's like a volcanic rocks falling in. So of course, his thoughts the memories his mind is going will be something that is big and is something like you know horrible and terrifying so extremely i mean the way you have explained it i was like wow you know if you keep that in mind then then you don't have an enemy actually then you know if you keep that in mind like if i keep that in mind the people are acting arman is acting the way he's acting is because of his memory, his thought process, then I feel bad about him. I don't feel that urge of hurting him or, you know, taking a revenge. That's just my, you know, my little, my little brain. And then, of course, like, you know, beautifully explained what still mind can do versus what a noisy mind can do. Uh, the only thing I wasn't able to um, get that when, um, when they go into that cave and she was asked, do you feel a burning sensation at the base of your spine? 
And then the question was not answered. So that gave me more curiosity. Is it good <laughs> or is it, is it bad? <laughs> I thought you should feel something. <laughs> so, well, uh, the more mysterious thing is, how did Patanjali detect that she had a slight burning sensation on the base of the spine? No, no, she was angry because she was but, angry. But that's not. But is it a is it a good? No, I understand she was angry. But when you do yoga, when you do mm -hmm. intense yoga, some sensation at the back of the spine, I thought, mm -hmm. was good. Now mm -hmm. I am like, hmm, that means something isn't right. So. Um, I don't know, but again, the question was not answered. You know, he mm. didn't answer that. He said, you know, she asked, how did you figure out? But then he mm -hmm. brushed her that, you know, past that. That's how, I mean, you know, you wrote it really well. So, um, and the other thing, I, I tried to Google it and, then, you know, I kind of got the binary system. This, um, I had no clue about this thing. Uh, don't, 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 don't walk away. Don't walk away. Okay. okay. Don't okay. walk away. He is warning her. Mm -hmm. He's saying that the yoga you're practicing is doing bad things to you. Mm -hmm. He's saying that to her. Yeah, yeah. That, that I understand, that I got because she has that and anger built in. She's got that anger built in. Mm -hmm. He's got that anger built in. Yeah. 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 And in Patanjali's framework, you know, the yamas, the niyamas, you know, he describes a regimen or values based regimen before you can really embark on the yoga journey, right? And she clearly isn't anywhere in that frame of mind. Yeah. And uh, uh, I have often had this conversation with my mentor here. And I have often said that there is, no, I'm not, I'm postulating that there is an asuric form of yoga. There is an asuric. And that some of this asuric form of yoga may have gotten codified in certain frameworks that are, that are, predisposed to violence. Mm -hmm. And so he's cautioning her. He's saying, don't go with yoga in that direction. He's just sort of telling her stop. But now continue. Next. I so so when a person is in this path of yoga, yeah. not from this point of you know from this book, I mean you know just and and let's say the person has some hatred in the heart, you know, they are full of anger. Now, you know, of course they want to calm themselves down and they choose the path of yoga. My understanding was as you continue in this journey in the path, the mind will calm down. Yes. Right? It it should calm yes. down. Yes. So, yes. so the anger is already there, but yes. you are still going, you're still doing the yoga, but slowly the mind should learn to calm down, right? Uh, it's uh, uh, as long as you have a good guru. Yeah. You okay. see, when you're doing yoga, you're really playing with a lot of things in your body. And you can easily trigger arousal of and negative sure. forces, negative energies in the base of your spine. And yeah, there's a you know, whole, whole framework of Kundalini that lays that out. So you just have to be very cautious. You have to be very cautious. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. So I mean, you know, it definitely was very. This chapter to me was very profound. Um, you know, it, it, focusing on the mind, how to how to calm it down. And my last thing was, I wasn't sure about this this golden ratio of one point six one eight. I had no clue what it is. So ah, the perfect. The perfect ratio. Well, you can uh, Google that. You can Google that. Yeah, that's I, I a, tried. That's yeah, a, yeah, yeah, that's how. That's, yeah. A, that's one of the. There Binary. are many beautiful, beautiful things in mathematics, yeah. uh, and that's that's one of the 
one of the beautiful things in mathematics. Okay, who wants to go next? Okay, uh, I'll go next, uh, just a second. Um, uh, picking up from what Prince G spoke of the of the ratio, the face ratio, right? I tried I tried it online. I don't think I have the Mona Lisa face, uh, but it's <laughs> interesting to know that um, Don has the Mona Lisa face, and then I wonder oh. that because the whole uh, there's that enigma around the face, right? Like you don't know where it's looking or whether it's smiling or it's or it's straight um and you introduced it at a point when they are about to discover things about their cognition twin or how to get closer to their cognition twin mm -hmm. so i think the placement of um that that enigma uh and the contemporary form of that enigma and then putting it at the right place where they are discovering cognition twin was quite quite intelligent there um mm -hmm. on the note of uh, carpenters yeah um the the illusion that i mean it's it's funny of course quite funny to to expect that they would do something like this but what's i wonder if i wondered if that's what we feel about life as well right it's like okay i'm in control and things are done and the bills are paid um working hard and everything but it it's still a it's still an illusion that you're in control right things may just happen etc so there's this um some message about you may have the best carpenters and the fixers or uh the greatest of foundation but control still continues to be an illusion um also maybe was it a message for I know it was said in reference to Arman and AI man that they think that they control things or they've figured out the world and try to, um, uh, you know, try to prevent the natural way of how life happens and they feel that they are in control and yet it's the Pandavas who have shown them that they are not in control the way that they uh, defeated the Kyum or the snake-like thing. Um, on this on Don's mother saying uh, we must go beyond the mind um, again went back to the Meghavahan story and then why they chose why they ended up being in Verinag where Maha struck the trident so that's where everything everything started so very curious to know uh, what will happen in the next chapters where they go where the source is and i believe the source is the clear mind which is where your cognition twin is um, that that's just my way of putting in uh, right. things that i'm reading okay, i'm that's just trying to right. fix it like to make sense to myself that's all right um but but in this chapter something very bold is being attempted very bold is being attempted in this chapter you're actually going beyond the cognition twin. You're actually, through you are Connecting. power of Rishi, you're actually manifesting in this other realm. So you are actually an experiencer in the other realm. This okay. is a big leap. This is a big leap that there can be two of you, one experiencing in the physical world, the king, you know, the story of Leela, the king is experiencing everything in the uh, sensory world, he lives, he dies, but then there is another king, the exact same king, who is experiencing in a different way. This is a very bold leap that's being made here, right? And Yuva says, I can do it with the power of my drishti. Mm. And then, then the, the father says, well, who's responsible for this bowl of spaghetti? Yeah. Yeah, and Yuva says, oh, my father. Uh -huh. <laughs> my yeah, father, yeah. I mean, that's... Uh, and then when he tries to explain, right, I'm including myself, I'm so imagining if someone explains how what happened and the sparkles showing and all, and even I would wonder, like, why? 
but um maybe we'll maybe we'll figure out in in the next chapters there uh and of course the mention of chocolate like um uh -huh. yeah. i am the one really who good. will who will, yeah. who will chop down a whole bar together but maybe i should try the savory <laughs> way <laughs> so look uh the world obviously quite correctly gravitates towards major texts like Vigyan Bharatantra or Shiv Sutra or some of these other pillars, right? But if you may have noticed in my stories, I bring out the smaller, lesser known people. Who was the first person that you experienced? Watulna, right? Mm -hmm. The mad mm -hmm. one, the intoxicated one, the Mahasas one, right? This is now your second introduction to Haswanath. This guy is a real general. He is the chief of the army, Kashmir army, in the 10th century. I just love him. I adore him. He has written one of my favorite, favorite all time texts called the Sabhodaya, Sabhodaya Manjari, the bouquet of teachings on the arising of ones innate consciousness. And he starts in the 10th century with a problem that we can all relate to. He says, look, I'm chief of Kashmir's army. I don't have time to sit and do Patanjali yoga. I don't. I mean, he's sitting in Patanjali's ashram, but he's saying, I don't have time. I'm chief, I'm at the court, I got to protect the kingdom, I have a family. And my people are the same. What do I do? So he says, I want instant, instant yoga. Instant yoga. So what is his technique? The 22 stanzas or whatever. His primary technique is around the idea of how to make the mind die. You know this process of approaching stillness? In his framework, it's how, what is the fastest way to make the mind die? And what was his break? His breakthrough was, you know, the difference between Indian music and Western music, there are many profound differences. But one of the differences is if you listen to the Santur of Kashmir and you listen to the Sitar and you compare it, let's say, to the violin, or the guitar, or whatever Western instrument you want, you'll find that the notes in sitar and santur hang longer in the air, and they die. Their amplitude dies slowly. But what is happening to your mind? When Sopori strikes, a best Sopori strikes, boom, your senses go up, right? And then the notes start dying. What do you have to train yourself to? You have to train yourself to the dying of the notes. Train yourself to the dying of the taste of the chocolate. What do we do? We love the taste of the chocolate, right? 
we love the taste we like the arousal and chocoholics what do they do shove it more because they want that arousal He's saying the arousal is only to create. Now, who are the people on earth who practice this? The French. When they eat, the French have mastered the art of savoring their food. They will eat it in small portions. They will take a very long time over dinner. If you look at the total amount of food they have eaten, compared to that, a Kashmiri Pandit by then will have finished four bogans of rice, eight damalu, six pieces of rogan josh. They eat very tiny. Why? They have mastered the art of savoring it. If you savor, you are training your mind to come to rest. So Hasavanta is a great discovery for all of you here. And he's saying, I'm going to teach you some fast techniques. You heard Patanjali, but he, you heard what needs to be done from Patanjali. But you hear from me how to do it fast. So what is it? What is it that you should do? Buy fragrant flowers and learn the art of taking a deep breath. And then just watch the fragrance start. These are all things that if you start practicing them, you will you will see liberation. But what is the enemy? The enemy is that in today's society, they don't want you to experience the joy of the dying of your cognition. They want you to experience the high. They want you addicted to the sugar. They want you addicted to the fat. They want you to crave, 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 crave. That's not it. Slow. You want to train your mind to slow. And this book even says it is not the beat of the heart, it's a resting, responsiveness of the heart. So there's biological truth in this also. Anyway, I gave more of a conversation this than the story demands. But this is so, he's such an important man. His techniques are so good, they're so simple. I overdid. Who wants to go next? Um, I can go. Chocolate, favorite... chocolate girl. Go, 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 <laughs> chocolate girl. Go. Yeah. Well, uh, firstly, yeah, uh, welcome back, Subhash ji. Nice to see you. Um, and uh, great to have uh, you back. Uh, uh, and I see that you're traveling uh, from your post, so I'm good to follow you also. But um, but thanks, Rakesh ji, for that. It's really mazag, um, I don't know what else to say it in English. Um, but I, I really enjoyed the chapter, and I'm really looking forward to the rest of the sargas in this prakarna. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I had that chocolate question, so that's clarified. <laughs> mm. And um, I love that uh, where you said, and this is uh, what you described, and it said, with the sound of silence, you are rearmed. So I really like that part. And uh, probably very hard to practice it, but certainly something that Dawn needs to needs uh, uh, to be armed with uh, in order to um, probably, feel, you know, hopefully win the fight. Um, mm -hmm. I had like a, I mean, I 
I did I read it in two parts like earlier in the week, so I don't remember everything, but I do remember the carpenter part that sh that you brought uh, brought up, which was funny, and uh, that they they leave a nail or two uh, <laughs> uh, unfixed so that you call them back and pay your money, uh, pay mm -hmm. pay them up, pay them up. Um, so yeah, I had a question where you was says what is real is what was in the beginning what is now mm -hmm. and what will mm -hmm. be at the end and nothing else mm -hmm. so i don't know what my question is but firstly the question is how do you know it is the end and where mm -hmm. do you know it's the beginning uh, i just did not understand this completely so that is one of my questions and another one was what i didn't understand is when he says when um half is says uh i think he says that is what progress is uh, and he says the world has been built on incomplete knowledge from the very beginning but what is built while you being useful no doubt inevitably is vulnerable to a surprise that all new better mousetrap as you may call it that is what progress is i really didn't understand these two parts so if you could elaborate on that. yeah so the first part i think uh, beginning and then I think we talked about it, and I shared the Joseph Campbell interview with Bill Moyers, where uh, Joseph Campbell is trying to explain uh, the difference between God and heaven. And you know the Indian Brahman, and uh, Joseph Campbell says, "God and heaven is everlasting." But it's not eternal. Brahman is eternal. Everlasting is till the end of time, right? From the beginning of time to the end of time, but eternal is beyond time. And that's what you is trying to say, that what is real is what was in the beginning, before time, is now and will be after time. That's the only thing that's real. What is real is what is eternal. Yeah, follow that. I follow that. Okay. So that's part one. Now come to your second one. Come to the second one, which is knowledge by its very nature. The metaphor that is used is knowledge is like snow. New snow always falls over old snow, which melts. It is the nature of knowledge to destroy knowledge, right? Fair, yeah. So anything, anything that's built on knowledge is vulnerable. Anything that's built on knowledge is vulnerable. And that's what. And it says that is what progress is. Because you are is. destroying knowledge one after the other, basically. OK. There's destruction, constant destruction. OK. Destruction, cre creation. Creation, destruction. Subhashi has written a nice paper on that whole phenomenon. Awesome. OK. The act, the act of creation cannot happen without destruction. True. True. Reminds me that what Sadhguru says that, and I've mentioned it before, that every yeah. to, to live, you have to die every moment, right? Um, yes. Yeah. Amazing. Yes. 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 That's very true. That's very true. If you want to be very creative, you have to have in you that you're also being destructive. 
something has to die. Okay. Rajeshi, who else is left? I could go next if, if it's okay. Oops. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that I, I get the impression when I was reading this that there are a lot of hints about how uh, Dawn is, is, should be able to overcome AI man and uh, Arman, you know, in this. It seems to me that there's a lot of hints given here. For one, he's, she's uh, told that, um, that uh, just like her mother had also mentioned that these uh, AI man and all they're essentially empty in nature. They, they, they have no real substance, you know, and which is something different from what they have. So if they can get in tune with their own true self and force the other side to try to get in tune with their own true self, that, that itself would be like a destructive thing for them because they'll realize that they're nothing, you know, that they don't have any anything. So that's my that's my guess at this time that the story would be progressing in that direction, but I could be totally wrong. And No, no, Patanjali says it with a laugh. He says it's basically when you go in touch with yourself, it's basically pressing the reboot button, right? Right, right. If you are rebooting, you're going in yourself, you're going to find something. If you reboot your Apple iPhone, what will it do? It'll wipe out everything. Right? Right. Yeah. Okay. And the other and the other other thing that I I mean I found very interesting was your description of the EPR paradox, you know, the Eisen uh, Einstein, Podolsky, yeah. Rosen uh, paper, yeah. which yeah. which is uh, which is, you know. Uh, amazing paper itself and uh, amazing uh, discussion that has been going on for the last hundred years, you know, in the field of quantum mechanics yeah. about the nature of reality, right? So right. that's, uh, and the fact that uh, these, uh, in Einstein, when he wrote this paper with uh, Podolsky, he thought he had got a, he, he had, this paper was meant to be a got it against quantum mechanics, saying that this whole idea of quantum mechanics that something can uh, that that a thing comes into existence only at the moment of actually measuring it, that it doesn't have a prior state or something like that, is for him it was very tough to come to terms with it. He, was, he made statements like, are you telling me that the moon is not there till you actually see it, you know? And he had made a lot of statements like that. And, and uh, recently we got the uh, Nobel Prize was given to these people who actually did a test to, uh, to test the EPR. Uh, uh, you know, paradox, and they proved that quantum mechanics actually is right. And, you know, so it's, it's a whole interesting new area to go into. But this whole idea that uh, things are connected and can be connected, even though they are random, if you just measure one thing at this point and it's totally random, that it can have instantaneous effect on the other thing, which is also supposed to be random, you know, that totally flew against all ideas of. Uh, uh, of uh, relativity, for example, you know, the whole idea that that you cannot go travel at the speed at a f speed past the light, information cannot travel faster than the speed of light. And so, anyway, this um, what I found interesting here was that you use that idea to create the idea, okay, that everything is connected, and so even even though we may hate our enemies or you know, they're somehow connected to us in some way or the other, you know. So they're all yeah. inter inter entangled with each other, <laughs> and yeah. so so hating something doesn't really help you, but understanding something is a much more useful way of trying to figure out how to combat something. You know, which so and I think that's the impression that I'm getting that she's learning these things, or the, she's going to be learning this from Patanjali. But look, you know, the basic thing is she has to do a dharma, and she has to do what she has to do. But the basic message that's been given to her is that your chance of success goes up if you, if you don't act with the same patterns of behavior as they do. If you act in the animalistic way as they do, chances right. are you'll be eliminated. Yep. So, you have to play a different game. So this whole chapter is basically 
a head massage. Right. It's supposed to be a head massage and completely, you know, change all of your thinking. Right. But having said that, none of you picked the most important thing in this book. So I don't know if I was going to go on with this. I was keep going. The, keep, uh, going. keep going. So keep. the lake, lake, the lake analogy was another great one, which I thought. Which one? You know, the lake. Yeah, the, the lake. lake, right. the lake. I mean, that's a very yeah. common analogy in in uh, in Christian Shaivism, right? Yeah. That yeah. you know, that uh, imagine your pure consciousness as like as like a lake, you know, and what you're seeing is the reflections of the whole world around you. That's more like the mind, right? And uh, a mind which is ruffled will, you know, uh, if you can get rid of all the ruffles on your mind, you know, the, the constant uh, agitations in your mind, you could actually see your true self, which is the stratum that is lying underneath, you know. Most of the time we see just the reflections and sometimes the reflections are even very poor because it's muddy or it's, uh, you know, tainted. Sometimes we see fantastic reflections, which is which gives us, you know, we can enjoy that, and and that's part of the whole rasa thing. But if you go even deeper, and when everything is totally calm, you could actually see that there is nothing that those those things that you were seeing as uh, reflections are not there. The true self is something which is lying underneath all, is the substratum of your your thing, your basic uh, nature. So you're not your mind, you're not your body. You're just that pure consciousness, which is making use of this mind and body. And this mind and body are just filters through which you interact with the universe around you. And you can learn to enjoy that, which is what Kashmiri Shaivism teaches. Or you can say that's all Maya, which is what uh, Advaita Vedant tells you. But it's up to you how you just deal with it. But the bottom line is you can get to your Shiva nature by examining this clear lake that you of consciousness so i don't know if that was the point that you were trying to make but well uh you know each person so, will extract what makes sense but it comes back again to what my opening comments were the mind is a friend of me and i for example see in my own young sons as you will see in your children that they'll go through a phase where they'll be very headstrong. They'll do what their mind tells them. Because to them, as for example, to the Western civilization, the mind is the truth. We don't believe that. We believe the mind is a frenemy. It's a friend that's also an enemy. And so you always have to be watchful of your mind watchful of your mind it is with you until it turns against you who goes oh anybody else has to go next before i tell all of you that you miss the most important thing. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We, we won't let you do that. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I want to introduce Akshesh. He's my cousin yes. and he just uh, Hi, finished his, he graduated and he's now having some time on his hands. So he's part of the book club. He's based, you can give an intro, intro uh, Akshay, if you can. Uh, but we'll yeah. come around. I feel like we all have something to say. Uh, Rakeshi, don't give it out yet. <laughs> I won't do that. Only you guys. Namaskar all. Uh, like my name is Akshay Rana and I'm from Andy. Delhi, India. I was in Bangalore nine years before moving here. I just recently graduated with my master's in computer science and I'm currently working. And uh, Amrita Didi is my uh, Masi's daughter. Congratulations on your, Thank you. your graduation here. Yeah. Thank you so much. Akshay, you're okay. in the presence of the greatest computer scientist right. only <laughs> in our community, but in India. <laughs> My professor, Subhash Khan. <laughs> so make sure you follow him, read his papers. And, sure. You know, yeah. Awesome. OK, uh, Arthi, you wanted to go next.
You wanted to say something? I thought you were unmuted. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. Okay. No, uh, I think, um, firstly, no, I have questions. So uh, what I didn't understand also was when you say that you be, you win by making the by connecting to the enemy and then uh Making then the enemy the... enemy void right no uh if making the enemy experience themselves self and hence then the enemy becomes nothing okay and let me that's walk how you let win. me walk you let me walk you through the steps the patanjali algorithm okay make it simple patanjali says you came to me wanting something. I gave you permission to connect with me. Correct. Once I gave you permission to connect with me, now you accepted everything that I'm sharing with you. OK. He fair. says, now let us look at your situation. Your situation is Arman and Eman want you. Correct. They desire you. They want you. Why? Well, bad reason. They want to kill you, sacrifice you, but they want you. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is you have to grant them that connection. Okay. But when you grant them that connection, what will they find in you? complete stillness mm -hmm. right yes and he's saying that stillness of the lake that they'll find in you because you are now connected with them you are in touch with yourself which is the stillness of yourself they will then be forced to connect with their own self what is their self zero <laughs> bubkas the big <laughs> void right what happens then to them they become part of you no they wiped out okay all right so but she is uh, also but but if she is wait, clear wait, let me finish Patanjali is all theory. He has laid out the theoretical construct. You can well ask, how will it actually happen? How will she grant the permission? How will she connect them to the stillness inside her? How will her stillness create the great void in her? For that, turn more pages. <laughs> Patanjali <laughs> has given the Five. Yeah, Remember, yeah. I told you originally, asuras look for power and boons that give power. Devas look for upai, right? Who has given the upai? Yeah, I kept this question for later because it felt like it was a segue into the future chapters. Yeah, yeah, yeah it all builds. Now you are in a very, very higher level of yatra. And what is yatra this rasa? Is what is this rasta? I don't know. Ah, so now all of you, my brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> you missed the most important thing. I had trained you so often, the chapter may always look for it. Neeti story. No, no. So, then? so. The rasa. Rasa I will read it. Hey, Bhagwan. <laughs> Lost in thought, I started whistling the Kuri lullaby. Oh, yes. I know the that. Pandavas watched me with a surprised smile because they, they did not, not know that I could whistle. They I did not know that. a lot about me. For that matter, I did not it know a lot true. about myself. Yeah. My life had become a source of unending amazement, even to me. 
Okay. What is it about a woman whistling that is a giveaway? Just as we talked about when a woman lets loose her hair, it is a very powerful signal. What is it about a woman whistling? Why was a woman whistling considered the most unladylike thing to do? Why don't women whistle? Because it, it, it's usually used by guys to, uh, I don't know, like taunt or not even taunt, That's but not. I don't know. No. I, I, will relieve, I will relieve you. I'll relieve you. <laughs> Women who would whistle, women who whistle were women who would whistle at their prospective clients. Uh huh. Okay. Not okay. <laughs> what is it? I'm so confused. That's when, so that's when all the gods come down and it's the, the feminine nature in its most independent form. Yeah, like you can call it, you can call it uh, as something as simple as, do you want me? Hmm. It's as simple as that. A woman whistling is a woman saying to a prospective man, do you want me? And she is revealing that power that she can project that message. She can project that message, not feel a sense of shame, not feel any sense of that. She can simply put that message out. Do you want me? But why is it important? Ah, that we'll find out. Okay, but is she in love with you, Yuva? Well, we don't know. We, we, everything is possible. Because she Every... writes that, you know, I wish I, she's very enamored yeah. by him at one point. Yeah, at that, and she and she does admit that like he would, she would, she admires the way how Yuva keeps things simple. I mean, yeah, simple yeah. and very she profound. That, yeah, she says I, I thought I, that I could spend my whole lifetime with you. Yeah, but no, that's not something I want to see now. This is a girl. This is a girl whose hair is hanging loose. She's a girl who has said I can whistle. You're beginning to see more and more of her personality revealing this. I girl. don't know, Rakesh. I don't I don't know this. She has I don't said, know this. She has said she will kill. Her name is Dawn. Her name is Dawn. And she has the face of Mona Lisa, so. She has a fa en enigmatic face of Mona Lisa. But if you look at Dawn, Dawn at every moment is creating and destroying. Sure, in herself. Yeah. yeah. So you have to you have to look at this sarga in it's like it's halfway, but we are still building up. There is no coming yes, down. Yeah, it's yeah, only yeah, 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 you're right. You're gone. You're, gone. <laughs> you're gone from the body. You're in the mind. You're in the mind. It's a tough place. Subhaji, go ahead. Go ahead, say something. So that we can well, um, wow, to the poor kids over here. Uh, well, first of all, uh, <laughs> listening to all of you, such brilliant conversation, such wonderful mind. Truly, uh, I'm glad it's it's been recorded. You know, it should be transcribed. All of you have such you know amazing insights. So, having said that, you know, I'm not being quite in touch with all the contents of the book because of my hectic travel. Just came back. And, uh, uh, but, you know, all that is being said here is so subtle and um, not everybody understands this subtlety, you know. I think maybe um, the way we've been raised or the milieu in which we have grown up 
provides us an advantage. Um, what more can I say? But and you know all these, yeah. But uh, Amrita, you said Sadhguru used that phrase uh, to live, you have to die. But I wrote a poem with that line. <laughs> I have a poem uh, which says you. exactly that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> to, to live, you have to die every day, <laughs> which is indeed true, which is indeed true. And I and that's why Shiva... Him. I thought you were quoting him. I didn't know. No, no, I'm no, sorry. no. I wasn't, I wasn't quoting him at all. But, you know, that's why Shiva, whose consciousness, whose life is also Mahakal, right? He's also death. And in certain perspectives, you say, in Trimurti perspective, you say Shiva is the god of death, right? It's a Puranic, simplistic yes. perspective, Brahma, creation, Vishnu, preservation, and Shiva, death. But, but of course, Shaivites don't say that. Sha uh, in Shaivism, Shiva both creates and because Shiva is consciousness. So everything in our thoughts, every thought has a creative moment and it rises up. You are terrified, which is Rudra or Bhairav aspect of it. And then there is also a Samya aspect of it, which is Parvati or Vamadev. And finally, you have Anugraha or Grace. So, and that's true. So, and I, I think uh, Rakesh's uh, phrase that mind is a frenemy, I don't know if anybody else has used it. I think it's a beautiful, insightful phrase. And uh, uh, perhaps a book, uh, Rakesh, Rakesh Ji, please write a book on it. This is truly great. You know, these books, which are so popular right now, uh, amongst uh, everybody, people want to know about who they are. Mind is truly frenemy. Truly. And that's what Tantra is all about. That's what uh, Rakesh, Rakesh's grandfather, Pandit Gopi Krishna, you know, when you do Tantra, you have so much of terror in your own heart. That's when you want your wife to give you hot milk in the morning. I think he, <laughs> he does mention that in his book. <laughs> We're reading know? that next. We are going to read that next, actually. <laughs> yeah. So, so I think that is true because you are terrified, you're scared. When you're doing Tantra, you know, Kundalini or whatever else, you don't know what is what, what is right, what's wrong. And all the boundaries come crashing down. And that's when you need help. And that's why the they Kundalini way is such a tough way. And that's why they said, please don't do any of this. Just do your bhakti and that's enough, you know. Just do your bhajan and bhakti and don't do this. But I guess um, Rakesh's uh, lineage is that <laughs> since his grandfather was a pioneer, he had to do it too. <laughs> and then put it down uh, as part of his storyline on Dawn. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we can't help it. This is something you've got to do. It's the terrifying way and um, scary way. Um, and I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. People should discover that way for themselves. Because if you recommend it to somebody, then you are partly responsible for their grief, yeah. right? Because yeah. grief is inevitable. And, and that's why we need to read that book, because it's really a warning more than anything else uh, but uh, but yeah no uh, when when this reminded me that I, uh, when we read about in this chapter about half half sarp and half human i thought of kundalini actually uh, but i i don't know if that was uh, related uh, to that or not yeah. um, amrita but, I just yesterday the day before i put up on my me uh, my latest essay called uh, The Churning of the Ocean and uh, Elixir of Immortality. And there Ooh. I talk about all of these multiple interpretations. You know, Kundalini is one of those interpretations. And it's got some rave reviews right now on LinkedIn. Uh, so that in some way captures the very essence of Hinduism, of Tantra, of um, everything of of what um, we go through our suffering through ourselves and as rakesh ji reminds us again and again the way of shaivism is the way of chamatkar you know and finally what helps the gods the devas is that chamatkar 
by by Vishnu when he takes the form of Mohini, because the asuras are always stronger. Why are the asuras stronger? Because the asuras represent our body. You know, when we are living, we often are tricked by our normal experience to believe that we are our body, and that's natural, swabhavik, right? And and so our consciousness recedes in the background, and then we have all our troubles, and then if we have the grace of Shiva, then or or, or Vishnu, whosoever, and Vishnu then takes the form of Mohini and beguiles your uh, Asuric aspects. You know, the most powerful force, I can tell you, is the force of beauty. And maybe that's the reason why I've been writing poetry ever since I was a young kid. So absolutely powerful. People do anything in their lives, like Laila Majnu or Shireen Farhad or whosoever else. And that works both for the good and for the bad. Yeah. Remember that line that Subhasi said, the most powerful force is beauty. We will, we will discover its power. But let me end with the brief discussion on the heading, inception, going to the source. So if you look at the knowledge process, knowledge processes are always incremental. You know, you see something, the mind gets the image, it goes into the memory bank, there is recognition, oh, uh, this is an apple, because the mind has a memory of an apple. But this particular apple has some something different, so there's some incrementality. And so most knowledge-based processes are incremental. They build on memory, and that's how there is progress. Accepting that that incremental process also, also in that signal, there is error that creeps in. And what you find over and over again, that ultimately when too much error creeps in, the only way to discover truth is to go to first principles. So for example, in the business world, uh, what is budgeting? Budgeting is a very simple exercise. You look at what you spent last year and you either raise it a little bit or you lower it a bit and you come up with a new budget. Until the company gets into a mess. And then you have to do something what is called zero-based budgeting. You have to start from first principle. Nothing is a given. Everything you start with first principle. A very profound reflection of going to the source for the truth, for new thinking, is Vivek Ramaswamy. I'm sorry to use him as an example, but he's such a good contemporary example. He does not buy into any conventional logic. Now, whether you like it or don't like it, point is not politics. It's more the process that he follows. Everything he starts with first principles. And when he starts with first principles, he arrives at answers that shock people. And he is not doing it for shock value. That's how his mind has been trained. He's a brilliant kid. He's a brilliant kid. So what you will find is all great truth all great revolutions, all great findings start from the source. So for example, Professor Subhash Kak's brilliant paper on e-dimensionality, and he's just come out with a new paper, which I still have to read, that there are certain things 
that cannot be explained excepting by using his thinking. The e-paper, e-dimensionality paper, didn't come out of any existing knowledge framework, right? It didn't build on it. It was from first principle. So this is something Kashmiri pundits should really train themselves in. Don't become lazy. If you want to be known for what our ancestors were known, develop the art of original thinking, original, derived from the source, not conventional thinking, which basically attempts to take existing knowledge. In many places, that's fine. But if there are things where you want breakthroughs, the word is inception. Inception. You have to start from zero. I will now ask each one of you to make your last comments, and then I'll release you for this long <laughs> weekend that I know you're all <laughs> waiting for it. So uh, may, 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 may I just add a you couple can. of points to what you said? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah. right. You know, the zero budgeting and so on. But I think any every all human beings do that all the time. You know, we all suffer and then we say, what is the meaning of my life? What is the meaning of my job? What do I do? And then we have responsibilities. So on Monday, we get into the car and go to the job, even though we hate it. So we are going through that process. But we do. Every human being does that. I think the only difference then is, do you have or does a person have some assistance in going from that realization, which we all do, everybody does, this point of zero, zero-ness. I'm nothing, all these social things and everything else is uh, drama. Um, although we also recognize the value of the drama at other points in time, but now how do I live my life? Or do I have to live my life just because I have to live my life? So maybe that's where you need um, conversations such as this one. Truly impressed with all that you guys have been saying. This idea of frenemy is so wonderful. Can I, Rakesh ji, can I steal it? All, all <laughs> yours, all yours. Everything I have, I owe to my ancestors. It's part of our common heritage. It belongs to everyone. Absolutely. No, no, truly, br but, truly brilliant. So I think all this is true, and we all do it in our own way. But how to find help in it, um, which is what um, your grandfather, for example, when he wrote his book, Kundalini, mentions, OK, when you wake up and you don't know what, what you've gone through, you need reassurance. Yeah. So ultimately, we also need reassurance from friends, from people around us who tell us that, OK, you know, things are not as bad as they are. Because anybody's situation, even Vivek Ramaswamy's situation, because, you know, and I totally um, share your assessment of him. And he's also getting a lot of pushback. Knives are out for him. They're saying the most horrid things for him. So you've got to have a very thick skin and you have to have faith in yourself. And um, if you have faith in yourself, you move on, and then people will recognize that indeed, you know, as uh, Rajinder Ji was saying, that what we really are is that light. You know, it's not something substantive. Not substantive is not the word. It's not material. It's something more than just us, our 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 normal self. So you know, it's. Um, Rakesh ji, you should really, I think this is fantastic. You, you, we need to have some kind of a forum so that we can, you can talk to people about all these deep insights, you know, not just the book, but outside of the book as well. Okay. So the reason I stress inception is you will find now with chat GPT and especially LLM models that knowledge now conventional knowledge will now be owned by the AMAN equivalent, chat GP. And so the need for us to be able to go to first principles and demonstrate that thinking becomes even more important because that AMAN doesn't have. AMAN has the knowledge of the masses, but first principle truths come from the self 
and lead to creativity. And so it's so vital for us as Kashmiri pundits because that was our heritage. We have to redevelop this. Now I want to come back to Vivek Ramaswamy and that we are the light. As Hindus, we have to really appreciate Vivek Ramaswamy. Look, this guy is a staunch Hindu, but look at his positioning. Look at his positioning. 80% of the Hindus now scream about Hindu phobia, uh, they scream about Islam, and they do all this nonsense. And in doing so, they have really subcontracted us. What has Vivek Ramaswamy done as a Hindu? He has positioned himself, he has positioned his God as being identical to the highest of American exceptionalism. That's what he has squarely placed himself. He has said, my God is the American God, with the parentheses Christian God, it's the same. I as a Hindu, my values, education, family, highest of American exceptionalism. And that's the position. It's a brilliant position because it is what we are. We are the light. This kid thinks on first principle. Um, okay, go ahead. Who wants okay. to go next? I want time. to, yeah, no. <laughs> It's like a campaigning, uh, it's turned into one campaigning <laughs> discussion now. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I think, uh, I, I think uh, it's, this was a good chapter. The next one is life breath. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. And, uh, um, you know, I think uh, the more we get into uh, reading this, the more we will ultimately, hopefully, find a self, ourself, and know uh, different techniques to uh, get to where we want to get to uh, in our um, journey of desire and fulfillment and all that good stuff. Um, but uh, I was supposed to be at the, at the camp, and I'm going to go tomorrow. And I was like, oh, I won't be able to do the book club. Otherwise, I stayed back tonight uh but yeah uh it's it's good to have uh it's good to have a community i just want to say please turn on your camera so i take your pictures it's a very long prologue for that <laughs> do, do we want some others if they have a closing comment to make Is no no yeah yeah they, they will they will but i want to make a picture first please turn on okay. your camera okay okay anamika has fallen asleep at you that's all right no, I'm here. I'm here, but I just don't think. I, okay. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's it fine. won't okay. just be me. It, it won't just be me. It will be my mini me along with as well. Great. That's, okay, <laughs> fine. I'll take a picture in here. Okay, fine. Uh, okay, okay, smile. Yeah. Keisha, look. Hi. All right. Thank you. Uh, but so let's let's go ahead and do the last comments while I post this. Alexa, stop. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't realize it was still on uh, um, the mic on the phone. I'm so sorry. Okay, last comments. Um, Rajendraji. Yeah, I was just going to say that, I mean, as usual, you know, each chapter gives you so many new characters to, like last time you talked about Vatul Nath, now this time we have talked about Hasva Narha Nath, whom I hadn't heard of before. So I'm looking forward to reading up on him. And also, I hadn't heard of Pingala numbers before, you know, I'd heard of Fibonacci series, so I had did a bit of a check on us. Oh my God, even that had been discovered by us even before, long before Fibonacci, so nice to see that. But yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's always so much fun to read all these chapters. It just keeps on, it's like you go from one part process, then you, you go into 10 different side tracks which each of which could you know keep you occupied for a long long time so we enjoy that good 
Anybody else? Oh, Prince Eiji? No, nothing, nothing about the book, but I just wanted to share um, the last conversation I had last week and I was um, with my one of my very good friends and um, unfortunately her father recently passed away. So she was telling me that her father always used to tell her the most brilliant kid that he had seen in his career was Subhash Park. <laughs> Absolutely oh, wow. correct. Not Absolutely surprising. Correct. No, Absolutely. I'm not just making yeah. it up. Um, Professor Kosa. Yeah. Yeah. Physics, you know, REC. So so we were laughing and I was telling when her you that, did, you when know. You did Subhaji. You're he was a brilliant, the... brilliant lecturer. I, oh. Brilliant professor. Absolutely, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Well, he was saying same thing about you through his daughter. So his daughter was telling me. So mm -hmm. I was telling her that, you know, how wonderful this group is, you know, in your presence and with Rakeji and, and all the members, you know. I mean, I am so fortunate and I'm learning a lot. And thank you for that. So the professor passed away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, you know, oh. in India, in New Delhi, yeah, Professor Kosa. So he was a physics professor from Regional Engineering College, Kashmir. Yeah. Well, he would be really happy. He would have been happy that that his uh, his student got a padmashri. So. I'm sure oh, he was very proud of it. Yeah. So he was, you know, that's what she was telling me that he was always used to talk about, uh, you know, Subhaji. That I think he was saying that he had only two students who he knew are brilliant, and one of them was, you know, Subhash Kakji. So. <laughs> Oh, you um, know, it's it's incredible. Sometimes I tell my American friends here in the U.S., the schools are so bad and most colleges are also bad in spite of all the money that is spent. In fact, my daughter, when she went to high school and this was one of those GN gifted and talented programs in Baton Rouge, they were taught math by somebody who didn't know math, who was the basketball coach. And what he would do before the exam, give them the questions so that they would score very high. You know, but America is compromised in so many different ways. And we, sitting in REC, had such brilliant professors. You know, just to think of it, money does not get you everything. So America, with all its money, which is what, to come back to Vivek uh, Ramaswamy, that's what he's pointing out. And somebody who has... <laughs> you know, wishing for everything to happen. He's saying that, well, the year 2024 will be when Ram will be installed in Ayodhya. You know, the Ram Mandir is going to be uh, inaugurated in 2024 and Ram will be installed in the wow. White House. <laughs> <laughs> Ram and Ram That's profound. <laughs> but, you know, right now in the national betting uh, odds, Ram is number three. Um, Biden has still the highest odds. Number two is Trump. Number three is Ramaswamy. You can go to um, what is that site? Um, Real Fair Politics. And they, have a, they have a place where you can see all these odds. So he's running at number three from wow. nowhere. He's doing very, really very well impressive. On, very impressive. on social media. He's doing really, he's trending on social media pretty much. Uh, I, I, right. I heard him also. He's just like popped up suddenly. All the algorithms are catching him. So good for him. Uh, um, yeah. So Anamika? I, I'm just looking forward to the next saga at this point. I think I have to, um, I'm really curious to know how manifesting the self or at least stilling the mind and and how that's going to help them um you know get the better of ayman and uh, arman because that's that's really i think i really want to see it in action because i know we've talked about yeah. it today but yeah. i really she's like anamika is like bahut ho gaya yaar aage chal no that's not that's not what i meant to no, really i really want to see it experience bahut ho gaya tum log ka gyan show me in action well, all right yeah. aarti one one tantric practice all of you ladies can do this week is start practicing how to whistle we'll ask you guys to Start the next session okay. by showing us whether you can whistle. There is no need. I can whistle, but I will not. Oh, good, 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 good. 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 <laughs>
I also know how to shoot, but I won't. Okay, okay. Harpy. <laughs> I, I've I've tried um, I've tried wrestling, never been able to do that. But maybe I'll I'll take you up on that challenge, Rakeshi, and yeah. I'll start the next session there. I um, my last comments. I'm just going to make some tea for myself uh, because I've got pretty much nothing to do for the rest of the day. Uh, savor the tea and just ruminate on whatever we discussed. Maybe read the next chapter as well. Nothing else. Yeah. Tea good. is the new chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate i'm not sure if i have the patience to say what every bite but maybe tea let's start with tea first <laughs> you okay, know in, in in glacier national park just south of the canada border there is a mountain a triangular mountain which looks like kailash you should if you get a chance you should visit it I it's very that. very beautiful oh you I posted on LinkedIn, right yeah yeah, yeah it's very, so, very beautiful I mean, yeah. yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. Speaking about I mean, it's, Kailash. Not, it's a bit more pointy than Kailash, I would say. Yeah, it's more pointy. In fact, um, then some American friend of mine, he sent me an email. He says, did you go to Hidden Lake in Glacier National Park? And I said, no. And there, the mountain also has ice and snow, quite like Kailash. And that was, I, but I missed it. There was no parking. There were no parking spots there. We tried twice. So, a wonderful place. Last time, this this time last year, I was in Kailash. Oh, you wow. are so lucky! You have done it. So fantastic. Last year, this time. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. Great. We are uh, as the yeah as the current magic man of India, the twenty-seven-year-old Dhirendra Shastri. Have you heard? Of, have you seen Dhirendra Shastri? He is more popular than Narendra Modi. He's got millions of followers. He's only 27 years old. And until five or six years ago, five, six years ago, he used to live in a jhumpri, jogi jhumpri, no electricity, no water. He's come from nowhere. He has such a presence that, uh, as he says at the very end, you know, people come to him with their personal questions and he, whether it's all staged or not, um, you you should you, uh, YouTube him. Yeah, um, he's think. also called Bageshwar Dham Sarkar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Now so at the end, he says, <laughs> he yeah, he says Ashirwad. So we should all say Ashirwad to each other. <laughs> all right, okay, guys. Until have a Akshay, great weekend. Uh, Akshay, any Hi. any uh, thoughts on your first uh, listen on Kaushal Kitab? <laughs> Without reading the book. I'm, I'm just happy to be here, looking forward to connect in the following calls and learn more. It's an have you started place. reading? Have you started reading the book? You should quickly catch up. I will. I will. I will catch up. Yeah, get the book and read it quickly, uh, so that by next week you've gone through most of it. And you know, uh, 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 Amrita does record the sessions. And you can also, you know, go and quickly skim through some, of, fast forward through some of those sections. Yeah, catch up. Then you will enjoy it much more. And, you, and that's you know. the reason why we we didn't say explicitly what kind of yoga can make the asuras stronger. It's, there are certain things we will not name, and <laughs> you are that's left to you to 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 sort of think for yourself. Yeah. What? All right. Okay, guys. All Have right. a great long weekend. Thank you, Namaskar. Bye. Have a nice Have a wonderful Thank you. Namaskar. Bye.